Hello. Welcome, Miami City Ballet friends. Nice to have you here. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me this morning. My name is Lauren Fadley. I am a principal soloist with Miami City Ballet. And I'm so glad to have you here this morning for my last uh, ballet stretch and strength class for you all on Instagram Live. I've been teaching for the past month, so this is my fifth class, and it's been so nice to have you all join me for some light stretch and strengthening uh, throughout this difficult time that we're all in. I feel like you know, the arts are even more important now and it's really nice that we can be brought together through something like this and really move and um, get our heart going and feel good about starting the week off strong. So uh, today we will be doing some um, stretching and some strengthening. If you have some light weights or anything to help with your arms, that's great. If not, no worries. A mat, a towel, something to hold on to, but everything. Um, you don't need any ballet experience for this class. And also of note, the reason this is my last class is because I am 32 weeks pregnant now. So everything that um, I will be doing should be suitable for, you know, every, every body. Um, but uh, yeah, it's time for me to take a little bit of a break um, from teaching and um, demonstrating for now. But uh, I look forward to seeing you all back on the stage at some point in the future. So let's get started. I'm gonna turn the comments off so that we can see a little bit better. All right. So let's start in a nice seated position on the floor. If you have a towel um, to lift up your pelvis a little bit, if that feels good for you, it definitely feels good for me, um, to kind of help open up your hips, feel that length in the spine. So we're just gonna start by closing our eyes, taking a few deep breaths to get ourselves situated before we begin. So a nice inhale through the nose, and exhale, and again, inhale through the nose, and sigh it out, last time, deep breath in, and exhale. Okay, you can go ahead and open your eyes. We're just gonna do some isolations to start warming up our body correctly before we get into um, some more intense movements. So we're just gonna start by nodding our head up and down towards the sky. A nice lift and then chin towards your chest. You can keep your eyes closed for this if it feels more comfortable. And down. Now we're going to go left and right, shaking our head, no, not pushing anything too much, just a nice gentle neck stretching. One more time. Now we're going to turn this into a full neck roll towards the right side. Might get a few pops in there, I always do in the morning. Again, you can close your eyes if it makes you a little bit dizzy. And reverse to the other side. Just really opening up that neck, releasing some of that tension that we're probably all holding in. And back to straight. Let's start with our shoulders now. Let's bring them up in a nice high, high, high. And side them back down. Feeling that tension up towards our neck, that stress, and then releasing it back and down through our whole back, through the nice long neck. Again, up, squeeze, and down. Nice long through the chest. One more time, up and down. Let's take some shoulder circles to the back. Again, opening up that chest, Feeling that nice length through the spine. And reverse, shoulders to the front. 
getting some blood flow throughout the body. And down. Okay, now we're going to take a little mermaid position here. So our front leg is in a little um, angle here. Back leg's the same angle, not behind you, just kind of to the side. We're gonna do some nice stretching movements. We're gonna put our right hand on the floor. Again, things are flipped on the Instagram Live, so as long as we do both sides, we'll be good. But we're gonna go up, lifting our hips, opening them, and then circling back down towards the left, the arm comes up. Again, hand on the floor, helping to push our hips forward and down and back to the other side. Just really trying to open those hips up, feeling that length in the back. So we're gonna use the porta bra, which is the carriage of our arms, and also our epaumal, which is the carriage of our head and how it moves in correlation with our arms. All right, let's come into two feet together Take a nice little stretch out, chest up and forward, opening up those hips nice and evenly now. You can slowly press a little bit on your knees if that feels good for you. Feeling that length in the back. And now we will switch. So now I have my left foot front, right leg is behind me. Nice angles with our, with our knees here. Try to keep the hips as square as possible. But really feeling that length and rotation. Go ahead and sweep up, left hand on the floor. It helps push you up and down over to the other side. See, it doesn't have to be so big. It's just a nice little stretch pushing those hips forward as you start to feel that length. If anything's crunching or hurting, you don't need to go that far. Just a nice little movement throughout the body. A little bit of a ripple back as much as you can, sweeping up and back and last time, hips up and back. Okay, going back to our seated position here, heels together, one more stretch forward, lengthening it out, few breaths here and coming up. Now, from this position, where we have both hips evenly square, our heels together, we're just going to open up one leg. Now, it doesn't have to be directly out to the side. Just a nice little angle that feels good for you. It shouldn't be pulling or anything like that. We're going to take a nice little stretch up and over, so I'm taking my left arm, you can use your right hand to brace you and stretching over towards that leg. If you would like to flex your foot to feel a little more length through your calf and your hamstring, that is fine. Bringing the arm back down. Again, lifting up and over. Really important that we always lift up before we go over so we don't have that crunching sensation. But we really find that length through the body Following the hand with the head also really helps up and over, keeping both hips on the floor. From here, we're just gonna do our pointing and flexing with our one leg that's out. So pointing towards the floor and flexing up, really articulating through the feet, warming up those metatarsals, really focusing on that second metatarsal so that there's no sickling or winging our foot, as we say in ballet, but flexing straight up and straight back down. Now a few ankle circles, just to warm that up for later when we do some plies and releves, and reverse to the other side. And in. Bringing the legs back together, we'll switch to the opposite leg. Just gonna angle myself here, so we can see a little bit better. So my left leg is out, I'm taking my right arm <laughs> through my bar here, up and over towards the left side. Here that hamstring, again, the foot can be flexed or pointed, whatever feels best for you. 
and following that hand back up. Really important that we keep both hips on the floor. Again, this is a nice um, reason to have a towel under your pelvis to help get a little more of that stretch and keep it even since we're all, you know, not the same flexibility. And you'll also notice that you're different from each side, especially as dancers. We always tend to have one side that's a little bit more flexible and a little bit stronger. That's completely normal. Doing our flexing and pointing. So flexing up towards the sky, you should feel that stretch through your calf and hamstring, pointing down towards the floor as much as possible without pronating the ankle. Really want to keep it nice, straight up and back down. And up and down. And now a few circles. Again, here's a moment where you might hear some snap, crackle, pop through your ankles. That's perfectly normal as well. Just lubricating those joints nice and smooth. And come back together. Okay, we are now going to go onto our back. So you can remove the towel that you were sitting on and maybe you want to put that behind your head or your neck to help prop you up um, so you can breathe a little better. I know that's, for my case, very important. So rolling back down towards the floor, one vertebrae at a time, we are going to bring our legs up, right leg up, and then the left leg up. We're going to flex both feet and work on our rotation. We're going to turn out from our hips, and turn back in. I'm just gonna move a little bit more to the side so you can see me. So we're flexing, we're rotating out to a ballet first position and rotating back in. As we lay here, we have to use our internal and external rotators so we can't shift our hips or anything like we might do when we're standing up. Really trying to feel the length behind the knees Again, that's not going to be perfectly flat side. We're just working on the rotation of our own muscles. And up. Let's point our feet. Turning out, we're going to beat our legs together. In and out. Just little beats from the inner thighs. From here, if you like, you can slowly bring them down a little bit to engage those lower abs and bring them back up. Really important that there's no shifting in the hips or the pelvis. We're just beating directly side. We're not going this way. Side to side like a pair of scissors and then going straight down only as far as is comfortable for you without, again, moving that lower back. Down and up. One more time down and up. Okay, bend those knees in. Go ahead and move side to side, feeling that stretch in the lower back there. Whatever feels good for you. Going to put the right leg down on the floor, taking that left, or sorry, left leg down on the floor, right leg lifted. I have one hand supporting behind my knee to keep it nice and straight. I'm flexing and I'm just doing a little pull towards my body. Whatever feels good for you. Just getting that stretch through that hamstring and calf. Then we're going to turn it in and have a little bit of a hip stretch here, bringing that other leg up from behind. And placing both back on the floor. Right leg is now going to the floor. Left leg is lifting, supporting behind my knee with my right hand. My left hand is around my calf or wherever feels comfortable for you. Flexing, slowly bringing that towards your body. Nothing should be sharp movements. We want nice, smooth things to protect our muscles. Bending, other leg comes in. Pulling this knee towards your body so we can feel that stretch from the back of our hip. Good. We're going back to 
our position here. Again, left leg down, right leg up. Up towards a parallel position. We're going to do some circles in towards the body. Again, no other movement except feeling that leg in space. We really don't want to shift our pelvis or anything else. Now reversing. You can have your arms on the side of the mat to help brace you. But you should really be feeling the work being done through your thighs and that hip. From here, placing that knee back down and switching up. Left leg, little circles in towards the body. No other movements. Drawing a nice circle up on your ceiling and reverse. Again, we want to hold our abdominal muscles in, ribs corseted as much as possible so we can help find that stability as well through our abdominal muscles. Bringing the leg back down. Now we are going to switch over to our right side. I'm going to move my towel. My right arm is helping brace myself here. And my left hand can be on the mat as well to help support yourself. Our legs are pretty much stacked up here as much as possible. They don't need to be flat. We don't want to have any arch in the body. So just a little bit in front of us, right on top. We're going to rotate that top leg. We're going to kick it up towards the sky with a flex foot and point it back down. Lifting up and point. So the toes bring you up through the flex and then pointing back down. Doesn't have to be super high. We're just trying to feel that stretch through the leg, feeling that length through your supporting side. If we were standing up, this would look like a grand in ballet, where we do our nice brushes and kicks towards the ceiling. It's a little bit more supportive and doable while we're laying on the floor here. Two more, and release. Really important on here that we don't grip in our hip flexors, right? We really wanna find that length up through the foot and back down. And switch over to the opposite side of what we just did. So I'm now on my left hip, have my left hand down here to help support. Again, always keeping that nice length throughout the body. Right hand also on the mat. Legs are stacked on top of each other, a little bit in front of yourself so that you can help with that balance, right? We never want to be perfectly straight here where we might have some instability in our pelvis and our hips. We really want to work those muscles correctly. So I am turning out my top leg, flexing up to the sky and pointing back down. I just got a pop in my hip, so that's good. <laughs> Starting to work there, lifting up and down. Grandma and down. Lengthening through the leg, trying to keep those knees as straight as possible here. So we're really working that whole leg. Lifting up and down, up. Again, not about the height. It's about that length in the leg and building that strength throughout our thighs without shifting anything in our hips. One more and back down. Let's meet in a tabletop position. With our hands in front of us, knees behind, really making sure that those elbows are supported, rotated out. Nice long neck and wrist. We're gonna do some cat-cow positions here. So inhaling, up, deepening into that spine, and exhale, up, inhale, neck lifting up towards the ceiling, really feeling that length in your back, and up like a Halloween cat. Cow, we inhale, arching as with what feels best for your body, and exhale, inhale. Really opening 
up that chest, trying to keep those shoulders down and lengthen. Few more times, back and up. It's really warming up that whole body there. And up. Let's place our feet behind us. We're flexing those feet. We're going to push up into a downward dog position. So hands are out in front of us. Again, elbows are rotated out. Do not let them come in. We want to keep them nice and supported. Same with our wrists. And pushing your heels down to the floor as much as possible. They don't need to touch. It's about sending that weight down and back into your legs. Let's do a few little switching of the feet up and down so we can really get that extra stretch in one leg at a time while also, again, warming up those releves for later. And two feet down, let's do both feet up to the sky and back down. Really feel that length in your back every time you're pressing those heels towards the mat, lengthening that body as much as possible. Okay, from here we're going to go to our plank and hold and back to downward dog. Again, hinging forward into that plank, engaging those ribs, all of those abdominal muscles, and back. Again, forward, keeping your neck nice and long, no big breaks in the body and push back again forward if you'd like to add some push-ups here go right ahead i will not be joining in that today so i have a little extra weight bringing me down towards the mat already a few more times and back last one really feel that length throughout the whole body nice and strong and push back down into that downward dog. We're going to walk our hands back towards our legs. Just take a nice little forward fold here, swaying side to side. Feeling that nice gravity pull in your back. And then we will slowly roll up vertebrae by vertebrae to a standing position for our next phase of class. So now if you have any light weights, this would be the time to get it. I'm just going to check over here. My music keeps, I actually have a CD player <laughs> that I'm using old school and it's skipping. So don't even know why, but haven't used a CD player in a long time. But for ballet, you know, we're in our normal classes, we're so fortunate to have live pianist accompaniment for all of our classes. Um, so, but before that, we have our CD players for now. So, using it, a little bit scratchy there, but bear with me. <laughs> all right, so we're going to grab our weights for our plies and our releve. So we're starting in our first position. For those of you that are new to the class, our first position is where our heels are mostly together, right, pointing out to the side. It doesn't have to be flat side. What is comfortable for you, where you feel you can actually use your rotation that we found on the floor where we moved our legs in and out. So that's where we find our proper turnout. We don't want to push our ankles and then when we plie, our knees go in the opposite direction. Very important that the knees go right over the toes when we plie, we keep those arches lifted. So today we're going to add our port de bras. We're going to do our preparation. Then we have our first position arms. We have fifth position arms, which are exactly the same, right? These are all the same position of our arms, just moving them in different directions. And then second position, which is open to the side. But again, it's a very similar 
position as first. What we want to see is that the shoulders are down and back, the elbows are lifted, and that chest is nice and held. So we will do today plie A, moving the arms to first, and straighten, to fifth, and straighten, open second, and back, down, again, plie and straight. Plie and straight. Plie means to bend or fold, if any of you have taken French or are French. But in ballet, most of our terminology that we use is from the French language and it all has certain meanings and they all correlate to the actual step. So as you can see, we are bending our knees and straightening them up open, last time, finish. Now we're going to go to our second position. So we tendu, tendu means to stretch. So we're stretching out those legs, pointing those feet, going down to our second position, which is the same as our first, just a little bit wider, hips width apart, about one foot in between. So not too large for a squat or anything like that, but nice underneath our hips so we don't have any weight on our heels, right over the balls of our feet, but so that we can still have that nice bend where our knees go over our toes, so not forcing your heels forward. Also, keeping that tailbone nice and flat, like you're up against a wall, so we're not having any tilts in our body. All that work that we did on the floor, where we were isolating our legs, and you know, and not using anything else, that's the kind of muscles we want to continue to use here. We're going to do our plies in second position, reversing our port de bras. So we plie, we open our arms to second and up. Now we go to fifth high and up, down to first and on ball preparation position. Again, second. Elbows lifted, shoulders down, chin also lifted, and down. Knees right over the toes, spiraling those thighs up, and plie, and down. No weight on the heels. The heels stay on the floor, but we don't want to sink the weight back into them. So we're really bending those knees, using those inner thigh muscles to rotate and up. Okay, release. We're going to go back to our first position. We're going to do a few releves in center here. Now, we usually do these at the bar or holding on to something for my class, right, or, or a chair. So if you feel you need that stability, especially if it's your first time, please find something to hold on to. We want to make sure everyone is safe first. Um, but for those of you who would like to try in the center, just going to keep the arms down here, holding your weights or not. We're just going to do a little releve up and back down. Now, releve means to rise. So obviously, our heels are rising up and we're going back down. Let me get out of that Miami sunshine so that you can. <laughs> I have a spotlight right there on my mat. So you can see how my feet go straight up and straight back down. So there's no rolling in our ankles. Going straight up over that second metatarsal and back down. A few more times, really having to use those abdominal muscles to feel that core. So you can releve up through your chest and rolling back down. We never want to slam our heels into the floor. We really want to feel that length up as we go down. Also, spiraling those thighs, squeezing underneath your glutes to help get that stability. One more time, up and down. Okay, so that was just a little prep for the next step that we're going to do. But before that, let's roll those ankles out, feeling those toes. Again, opposite direction. Messing up my mat here. Other side. 
just to get that little stretch to prepare for our next combination. So we are now going to do a little bit of a chasse. Now chasse means to chase. So this is normally a jump that you would see, you know, going across the stage, um, taking up lots of space. We obviously don't have that right now um, while we are at home. So we're just going to do a modified version of this chasse through a releve position. This is also going to target our legs, our calves, our feet, and incorporate the plie and the releve that we just did. We can keep our weights if you are feeling comfortable with that. If not, go ahead and put them down. You'll still feel a nice resistance just by using your arms for all of this. So, get my music going again. We're going to do from first position, we're going to chasse out and then releve up to first, plie second, releve to the side. So it's going through a second position, then we're chasing those legs up to a releve in first, second and first. Again, side and up. Arms are going through second and first, so it's complementing what our legs are doing and up. Really having to use that core to stay in that releve and up. Elbows lifted the whole time and up again. Right, first, second, and first, left, up. Second and up. Okay, shake it out. We're going to try it again with another um, arm position, but just a few notes on this. So, where I'm kind of getting stuck on my mat here, but we kind of want to go down into the floor into that second position. Then we gather the body up to that first high releve, back down and up to first. Then going to the opposite side. So we have the two legs out to that side in that second position that we found. Then we're chasing our legs up to that first position releve that we did and back down and up, okay? So go ahead and stretch it out a little bit, grabbing that thigh. You can use a towel to help get your quad there as well. Oops. <laughs> Taking that towel in one hand, feeling that stretch through the quad before we repeat this again with our arms up in fifth high. So switching legs. This is, towels are always good when you don't have a strap or you know we just don't have the length in our arms or the flexibility. It's never um, a bad idea to grab a prop to help with that. Yeah, I'm gonna towel off my sweat here. Getting hot in Miami. All right, so grabbing those weights again, if you wish. If not, if this, if this feels a little unstable, this is a pretty advanced kind of step we're doing right now, no need for the weights. But, you know, maybe they help with your stability a little bit as well, getting that arm and leg workout. So now we're going to repeat with the legs. We're going to go second position, plie, legs and arms. As we go to first, releve, we're going to bring our arms fifth high. Now what's really important here is that you don't bring your arms back and go to the back, right? I have my weight naturally taking me forward these days, but we really want to make sure that those arms stay in alignment and they lift up so you're always in your peripheral view, be it in second position or fifth position. Never wanna open that chest, open that rib cage, open those abdominal muscles. We're much stronger when everything's corseted in, when we have that length in our neck and our shoulders are down and back. So a few times we go plie, second, chasse, up to releve, arms in fifth, second and other side and up, plie, 
chasse releve. And right, as you can see, the arms are connected to the legs. So they're complementing each other with the movements. That's one of the really wonderful, beautiful things about ballet is that connection between the arms and the legs. Down and up. One more time to the right. Releve, chasse, releve. Left and up. And up. Okay, good. Let's put those weights down. We are done with them for now. Just want to check my time. Okay, we are good. Let's move on to holding on to something. Now, I am lucky enough, since I'm a professional dancer and I teach online, um, to have a studio in my house, right? I got some Marley from Miami City Ballet and my own bar. We don't all have that. That is, you know, not a normal thing for non-dancers. So we don't need a bar. You can use a chair. You can use a sofa, a counter, whichever. Anything that can be a little stable for you. We don't want to push with our arms. It's just there to kind of help ease with that balance. So we're going to do another little new step here for my last class. We're going to do a fondue. Now, fondue. I'm sure we've all eaten fondue, right? With the cheese and the chocolate. Um, but what's really important about the, the cheese one with the fondue is that melting feeling of that cheese when you pull that out and you feel that nice length. So that's why this step is called fondue because it means to melt. And ideally we're melting our legs and then we're straightening them back up. So what we're going to do is we're going to plie on one leg, making this nice diamond with our legs. The other leg is in front, and we melt the legs up together. So the two knees together and straightening back up together. So that's the most important thing about the fondue, is that they melt together and back up. You should start to feel this on that supporting leg glute. Trying not to get that weight into the hips, right over the ball of the foot, chest lifted and up. Again, the knee goes back in spirals, the heel comes forward, down and up. Now here we're going to do a little attitude, plie and straight. Plie and straight. Attitudes, we're just bending the knee and rotating. Each time, feeling more rotation. You should really feel it in your inner thigh, not dipping the hips, staying nice and square. Seven and eight. Now we're going to do our last part of this combo. We're going to do a pique. Pique means to prick, just like taking a needle, nice and sharp. So we lift up. Feeling those inner thigh muscles lifting through the chest when it starts to burn. Up, 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 back to first. Let's take a little plie in first, stretch it out. And now we will go to the left side, to the front. So, fondueing. Foot is pointed. We're plieing over that supporting leg. There's no weight in our heel. The heel's on the floor. But again, just like those plies we did in first position, it's that same concept, that knee right over the toe so we can protect our legs here. So we fondue, we melt, and then we squeeze that cheese out, in, and two legs opening up. Really important that you keep the hips Nice and square, really thinking about the inner thighs turning out, and then the inner thighs rotating up each time, getting a little bit more of that turn out and up. Important that we feel that spiral of the legs and up. Then we're going to do our attitude, plie and straight. Keeping the legs right in front of you so they're crossed. Everything in ballet comes through 
that cross of the midline of the body. It's much more strong when it's right through the middle than if we're opening up out here. Heel forward, heel forward, no dip in the hip, just that knee staying where it is, and that heel and up. Now pique, up, and two, and left. Prick, six, seven, and eight. Still feeling that spiraling rotation. Lift, 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 and lift. Good, let's go into a second position. Let's do a nice plie in second position, stretching out those hips and kind of move them back and forth. That should have really targeted a lot of our inner thigh muscles. Now we are going to repeat that to the back in our arabesque. So, same concept. We plie on two legs. Let me move this towel so you can see. Plie on two legs, now we open to the back. Remember, really important that they go together, both bend and then both straighten up together. Also important, not out here, like a doggy on a fire hydrant, right behind you. And also feeling this thigh lifting, so it doesn't become turning in like this, but we're really turning out and spiraling those legs using those inner thigh muscles again like we found on the floor, but now it's going to target much more of our glute. So here we go. Fondue, lengthen to arabesque, and fondue. Keeping that chest lifting up as you go to arabesque, not tilting forward, the energy goes up, and lengthen. It's a big push-pull the whole time. Really feeling it in that glute if we're using both those turnout muscles correctly. Up. Again, no weight in the heel. And up. Now our little attitudes and plie and straight. Keeping that knee lifted, not turning it in, right? Not this way. Spiraling it up behind you. And up, and up, ready for our pique, pique lift, and lift, all from the glute, up, lifting on that supporting side to help, chin lift in, making it look so easy, up, and up, and up, and up, okay, let's take that leg up onto a counter, whatever you need, Kind of stretch it out. If you don't have something, you can hold it yourself, right? We can bend forward this way. Whatever feels good for you to stretch it out so that we can go to our final side. I have to balance everything out. Can't just do the one side. That's how we get all those instabilities. So back to our first position. Plie, fondue. Weight is right over the ball of the foot. We lengthen up behind us to arabesque. Fondue chest stays lifted, supporting side. And up, fondue. Two legs together, melting. You'll never eat a mozzarella stick the same way now. When you see that cheese, that's what's happening with our legs. And out, fondue. And turn a little bit here so you can see. Now we'll do our attitudes. Plie and up. Feeling the connection between that knee that's over that toe and that heel coming in. So you're really spiraling the whole body while lengthening up. Shoulders down. And pique. Prick. Up and up. The accent's up. Up, nice and hot lava on that floor. Lift and lift again. Up, up, up. Feeling the length in the supporting side. And finish. Okay. Let's take this away. Let's just do a nice big stretch. Lifting those arms up. Let's go forward. And again, up. Taking those arms, let's clasp them behind us, feeling the length. Again, floor, you can open up your legs, 
swaying side to side, doing whatever feels good to you to stretch out after that hard work at the bar. Whew. I'm sweating, so we're going to finish up class with a little port de bras. We're going to go back and do some swan arms. So at Miami City Valley, we are very excited about our next season, even though things have changed a little bit um, out of our hands, we are um, still going to be presenting um, as best to our ability, uh, Lexei Ratmansky's Swan Lake. So we're very excited because this is going to be the first full length Swan Lake in Miami City Valley's repertoire. So why not? Get those swan arms ready and start practicing now. So let's just stand in our first position. Again, doesn't need to be crazy turned out, really just for the stability of our legs. We're going to take our arms out to the side. We're just gonna do little ripples with our arms. So they go down, the elbows go down, and then they turn back up and they just follow along. What's really important here Feeling that length throughout the back. Really using your arms like wings, right? We don't want to be this kind of bird. We want to be this, so it's that chest is lifting, arms are coming from the back. Nice little circles with those elbows and then the rest of the arm follows. Now big breath up, the head follows, the wrist touch, and then we come back down. The head is the opposite and Again, always feeling that correlation with the arms and the corps de bras and the a pommel of the head. Again, little arms, three and four. Also, very good arm workout. And up and up, down and up. Big breath and down through the back. The whole body should be engaged and down. Now, taking the arms out to the side, we bring the right arm up and over, so it's like a wing, turning our head, the other arm is mimicking it, so it's this same position that we just did, just here, and then we bring it forward, and we're going to do a few little flaps to the front, really making sure, that, again, that's coming from the back, so it doesn't just become this, but it has that nice, beautiful motion. Other side, left arm up, right arm under, feeling that length through the spine and forward, the head looking at the wrists. Again, reaching up and over. The arms should always be like they're moving through water. Perfect for swan leg. And up and other side reaching and arms and let's just do one more big breath up and tondu to the side we're going to do our curtsy and back to first one more big breath up tondu side and curtsy to finish our class so thank you all so much. Whew, got that spotlight for real. Gotta close my blinds. Let's see, maybe I should just pick it up and move away from the light. There we go. <laughs> now you can see my Miami City Valley shirt. Um, thank you all so much for joining me. I'll turn the comments back on here for the last second. Um, it's really been a pleasure working with you all. I know that I needed this kind of movement right now, uh, probably just as much as you all. Um, so I hope that everyone continues to stay safe and well, and please also continue to follow along on um, Miami City Ballet on our Instagram and our Facebook and our website for a lot of fun, interactive things that we have going on and for the other classes that will be continuing. I'm sorry that I cannot join you all, but I have a new ballerina to take care of. So I'm sure she's enjoyed dancing with you all just as much as I have. Um, so thank you all very much and wishing you all the best and hope to see you in Miami on the stage sometime in the future. Thank you all. And yes, this will be posted um, 
on the story for the next 24 hours and then we will um, get it up on the YouTube so you can find all of my old classes um, from the previous month on there as well as this one and the other class offerings that we have. There's a, a Valley Basics class in English and Spanish and um, all of those will be available for you there. So tell your friends and join me again on YouTube and I hope to see you all in the future sometime soon. Thank you very much. Bye guys.